Wait right there if you think solar is dead in California. You may be wondering if the big solar savings are gone. Depending on where you live in California, it's not so clear cut anymore as it was in years past. I'll be covering what's changed and who's affected in this video. Hi, I'm Tom with Premier Roof Solar. I've been helping homeowners save money on their power bills for the last five years with renewable energy. My goal is to educate and empower homeowners like you that you can make the best decision for your unique situation. This past April, California allowed three of the largest energy monopolies in the state to cut back incentives for solar production from homeowners. Investor-owned utilities, control 72% of the market here in California. And the three biggest companies are SoCal Edison, PG&E, and SDG&E. They successfully lobbied to do away with the one-for-one -one credits for the energy that you send back to the grid. Or in other words, the retail value credits that you would get for any energy that you send to them. They claim that homeowners without solar are paying higher and higher energy bills to maintain the grid because of homes with solar. Of course, they don't mention the $2 billion they rake in per year, nor that they have to pay settlements for the Thomas Fire, Woolsey Fire, Zog Fire, and I'm sure a few others that I'm forgetting because they didn't invest money in their infrastructure to maintain it when they should have. All that said, these changes have been approved by legislators. So what does that mean for you? It depends on who your utility is. LADWP, for example, who serves millions of homes in California, is not affected by these changes from NEM2 to NEM3. There are tons of other smaller power companies typically managed by smaller cities or smaller municipalities that are not affected either. Around Los Angeles, that would be places like Pasadena, Glendale, Burbank, amongst others. If you live in one of these areas, then you can breathe a sigh of relief for now. If your power company is PG&E, SDG&E, or SCE, AKA SoCal Edison, then you, my friend, are affected. If you already have solar in one of these affected areas, you're good to go. This change affects homes that don't have solar already or homes that do have solar but are looking to add more solar panels. But, and this is a big but, that doesn't mean that solar is dead in these areas. What it does mean is that you pretty much need a battery now. Batteries, of course, increase the cost. Or in other words, they reduce savings or extend the period for your return on investment. I'm sure you're wondering, why does this change mean that I now need a battery? Another shorthand way to think about this is the higher and higher your energy bill is, the more savings you're gonna get or the shorter your return on investment period is gonna be with a $2,400 annual spend on energy as the baseline. So in a nutshell, if you're in an affected area, the credits for overproduction at the wholesale price will not cover your evening usage anymore. And that's when the battery comes in. During the day, you'll power your home, excess energy will charge up your battery. And as you progress into the night, your solar panels produce less and less power and eventually stop producing, meaning that you stop getting power from the solar panels. You'll then start pulling energy from the battery. There are tons of variables when it comes to getting solar, but that doesn't mean it has to be confusing. It's just a matter of having a conversation with a knowledgeable solar expert that you trust so don't get deterred. Every homeowner, home, roof, utility, financial situation, everyone's lifestyle and goals are gonna be different. So don't go with a cookie cutter option and don't get pushed into one option without fully talking about all of these. The most common way people do it is some kind of a monthly plan, but what that looks like can vary widely. To learn more about what you should know before getting solar, click this video next.